What's up guys? So today I want to take a look at the 2020 House elections. Now the US House is currently held by Democrats. Now they have a, I think, 235 seat majority to the Republicans 200. And uh, the Republicans actually just won a special election in California 25th. It was won by Mark, Mike Garcia, uh, defeating Christy Smith, giving them a seat that was actually held by the Democrats now for a short while after the midterms. It was the resignation of Katie Hill that sparked that. And uh, I've been wanting, wanting to do uh, this for a while, so uh, I'm going to look at every district that I think is competitive and we are going to take a look at how, how it will turn out. Now, some of these seats are uh, pretty obvious, you know, uh, Will Hurd is retiring and I don't think there's any Republicans that can actually keep that seat in GOP hands as well as we have these two seats in North Carolina that are going to go to the Democrats. But, you know, let's just start down in the South. We can go to Florida, where the seats that were flipped last time were these two, uh, 27th and 26th. Now, Carlos Corbello lost that seat. I know that Maria Elvira Salazar is running in uh, the 27th, and I do actually... I don't think that the Democrats will have a good shot at keeping both of them, but right now they're both favored because this, uh, this are district that Donald Trump did not win. So right now I'm going to give them to the Democrats. But I don't think that there will be a very big margins. And I don't think that the Democrats will be able to flip any other seats in Florida. Heading up to Georgia. Now here you have losing Mac Macbeth's seat and uh, Rob Woodall. Now he's retiring. I know that his district actually, it was won by Trump. So was Lucy Macbeth's district, but that was by a much more narrow margin, so I think that she will hold on, and I think that the Republican will hold on, hold on to Rob Woodall's seat. Now, Joe Cunningham, he's going to lose, and most people know that. He basically won because of a fluke in uh, the Republican primaries, and uh, Mark Sanford, of course, was defeated by someone, and uh, then uh, that somehow went on to lose the general election to Joe Cunningham. In North Carolina, you have these two flips, of course, and on vice, I don't think the delegations are going to change. George Holding and Mark Walker will be going home in Virginia. Now, this one is interesting because there was a big wave in 2018 in Virginia. The Democrats actually flipped three houses. They flipped the seats belonging to Barbara Comstock, Scott Taylor, and Dave Bratt. And because of uh, the margins of victory in these seats in the 2016 election for the Republicans and how narrow it was in 2018, I actually think that both of them will go back to the GOP, especially this one. I mean, Scott Taylor, I believe he got like more than 60% of the votes and then losing narrowly in 2018 and he's running. Scott Taylor is running for his old seat, so it will be very tough for Elaine Luria to hold that seat. Now, going up to the Rust Belt, I don't uh, see why Scott Perry would lose. I mean, this is a red, more red electorate than uh, in 2018, which had a blue wave and he still held on. Also, I don't think much will change otherwise in uh, New Jersey. Connor Lamb should be able to hold on as Susan Wilde. Matthew Cartwright could be in danger, but I don't think that he will lose this time around. Now, in New Jersey, the Democrats actually flipped a ton of seats. All seats, except from this one held by Christopher Smith. He's been there since 1981 and he's not retiring. He's going to win for another turn. Uh, Jeff Van Drew, Democrat, flipped to Republican. He's going to win. And the only person that I will believe is losing is Andy Kim because of how narrowly he won and that was a Trump district. So I think uh, actually Tom Balnowski will uh, hold on as well as these people that I don't really care about who we are. Uh, and uh, otherwise, New York. Lee Zeldin, he's going to win re-election. Uh, Peter King is retiring, but I don't think that he is going to... I don't think his seat is going to flip. I mean, he is quite well established. It, it has, it's been a Republican seat for a long time. And, uh, of course, Trump is from New York, so I don't think that there will be a big anti-Trump wave in that state, especially in not in a presidential election. Also, I think that Max Rose will lose because this the Staten Island district, there are actually a, a quite a good number of Trump supporters on Staten Island. 
have a heading up to upstate New York. Most of these are quite obvious, at least the Fanic will hold on. I think they, this was uh, Chris Collins, is it? He retired because of the scandal. Uh, but I actually don't see that see it going Democratic. And I think that both of the Antonis, and Anthony and Antonio, are going to lose because they won quite narrowly. These are Trump districts. If they win, it is a sign of a big rejection of Trump's message. Otherwise, I don't think that uh, the Republicans will have the chance to flip any seats in Connecticut or New Hampshire. In Maine, you have Jared Golden. Now, he actually voted for one article of impeachment and against the other. He was the only person in the House to vote that way. Of course, Mitt Romney did the same in the Senate. And I actually think that's quite cool. But Jared Golden, the Republicans dislike him for voting for one and the Democrats dislike him for voting against another. So I don't think that he is going to be able to pull that one off, even though I find it quite admirable. And it's a sign of <laughs> bipartisanship <laughs> in one way. And of course it's a Trump district, like 10 percentage points margin. Okay, so mo most stuff here in Western Pennsylvania and Ohio will not change. Of course, Tim Ryan will hold on. He is running, so yeah. So in Michigan, you have Mr. Libertarian here, Justin Amash. He is running on the Libertarian uh, presidential ticket, or, or in the primary. Anyway, he's going to not seek re-election, and so the Republicans are going to pull that one off. And I also think that this district, which I believe is the home of uh, Red Eagle politics, I believe that this is going to go red. So, uh, I mean, it's not that suburban. Yes, Haley Stevens' district is quite suburban, but it is mostly, well, r rural Michigan slash suburban Michigan. Trump is quite popular here. His message is really strong in this area. So I don't think that is going to be held by the Democrats. Also, I don't think much will change in Indiana or in Illinois. I think that Rodney Davis should hold on. I can see why he wouldn't. And, of course, here the Republicans lost two seats in Illinois in 2018. They lost the seat, uh, which looks like headphones or something in here. And they're not going to win that back. It's going to be held by the Democrats. But Lauren Underwood... She represents a district that is not really that much in r urban Chicago. It is quite a uh, rural slash suburban district. I don't think that she's going to be able to hold that. Also here in here in the west part of the state, uh, Cherry Bustos, I think that that district was won by Trump, but she's going to hold on anyway. Same, as, same with Ron Kind. And nothing will change in Wisconsin because the map here is quite based upon natural barriers, like you have Milwaukee, its own district, and uh, Republican suburbs are arranged in that way. Heading to Iowa. Now, these two seats of Cindy Axne and B. Finknauer are considered a toss-up, but I actually think that the Republicans will pick up David Loeb's seat because he is retiring and hold on to Steve King's seat, and I think that Abby Finknauer is going to hold on. And the reason I believe Cindy Axne is not going to hold on is because it is a it is a state that elected Trump by a margin of 10% and she won her uh, district her seat by a much smaller margin than Abby Finknauer. Now heading up to uh, Minnesota, I think actually that Colin Pearson is going to hold on. And the reason why, it's mostly because he voted against impeachment. But of course that will not make him very popular among Democrats, but he is a very conservative Democrat that can have garnered uh, many votes from Republicans. So I'm I'm not sure about uh, this one, this one belonging to Angela, An Angela Craig. I mean, no, Dean Phillips, he's going to be re-elected. He won that seat, flipped it from the Republicans in 2018. Angela Craig, I, I think she'll probably hold on. It depends how much of a play Trump's make for Trump makes for Minnesota because he can definitely win the state. But uh, we'll see. Maybe he goes to 
places like Wisconsin and Pennsylvania instead because he feels that he has to protect the states that guide him to the White House instead of going for new states. But that all depends. Okay, everyone knows that Kendra Horn is going to lose. I actually think that Sharice Davids will win. And the reason why is because this is not a well, this is not a very pro-Trump district. He maybe won it in, uh, uh, or maybe did not. No, he didn't. Maybe not win win that one in uh, 2016. But you might win here with a typical establishment rep Republican, but not with a Trump Republican running with Trump on the top of David. So in Texas, I don't really know why this Pete Olson seat is considered a toss-up. I think the Republicans will hold around except from the wheel herd area. And I think that uh, Colin Allred will also uh, hold on to his seat. And the big question is actually uh, Lizzie Fletcher. Crenshaw is going to win. Crenshaw is awesome. Uh, Lizzie Fletcher. Okay, I yeah, you know, probably, probably. I, I actually don't know, so I'm sorry, but Suburban Sprawl. Uh, but this one I know. A what? Shorty, shorter. Tor Tor is small. She is going to lose, and uh, I hope because that uh, then we won't have to say that very difficult name oh, later. Uh, Jason Crow. I mean, suburban Colorado, not very pro Republican. Ben McAdams. He voted for impeachment, even though he's from a very Republican state. But uh, so did Mitt Romney. So I don't think that I don't think that he he will lose because of that. I mean, it's probably more of an advantage, because Trump is not very popular. And I don't think the Republicans will flip any seats in Nevada. I think they will hold their own. I don't think that anything will change in Arizona. It currently has a 5-4 to four Democratic majority in the House. So, moving on to California. Now, Amar Kampanajar, I think, is running again in the 50th district. But he could not win in a blue wave year. Yes, he was running against an incumbent, but the incumbent was actually indicted. Uh, but it's a very re Republican district, so it's probably going to stay that way. Now, the GOP actually won the special election here, so Mike Garcia he is holding that seat, and I think he will win it also in the general election. Not because Trump is overwhelmingly popular, because he is not in this area, but he is a pilot, and Christy Smith actually mocked him for his military service in uh, actually a quite inappropriate way, saying that she um, had uh, law books and were much more qualified than him. Also, TJ Cox, this one is complicated because it's a district that voted heavily for the Democrats in, in the presidential race, but it has continued to vote much more Republican for congressional candidates. So David Valdau lost that seat. I think it's probably no, you know what, I think that they will go back to the GOP. Yes, I do. It's difficult. And uh, the last one is this district held by Jill Cisneros. Uh, I think Young Kim, I think, is running. I'm not sure, really. But uh, I think she has a good sh shot because of her... I mean, she is going to garner some Asian American votes, and I don't think the GOP will flip anything else, especially not the, the Mike Levin seat. They could, if they did really well flip back these seats, but not that one. And uh, I think we are about uh, finished. Uh, yes, we are finished. And that leaves the Republicans almost at the majority. They win like 15 seats from the Democrats. It might be a bit uh, too optimistic for the GOP. But there are some places where I gave them the win, where they probably won't win and some places I did not give them the win where they have a decent shot at doing. So, I mean, the path is there if Trump and the GOP wants to take the majority, but it is not like they are not favored. The Democrats go into the midterms with an advantage in the House maps and uh, unless there is a massive op operation on the re Republican side, they are not going to win the House and they have more retirements than the Democrats, so I don't think that it's going to happen. I would believe that they might get something between uh, 208 up to 215 seats. So that's it for me today, guys. Please drop a like. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching. Good night.